What's up guys, hope y'all are having a great day today because I think I might be about to ruin it in all honesty because if you're like me, you've probably noticed this obsession within the video game industry to constantly inject political messaging and ideologies into the franchises we know and love for no real reason other than to score ESG points across the board and you've probably also noticed that pretty much every AAA gaming franchise and studio has been going downhill dramatically when it comes to the quality of games, the storytelling, and narratives within those games, and overall video games as a whole have just been getting worse and worse as the years progress. But what I think is interesting and what we're going to be discussing here today is a possible solution to this question. And today, what we're going to be talking about is pretty crazy, dude. And if you would have asked me a year ago if I believed all this could be possible, I honestly don't know if I would because it just seems really outlandish, but I 100% can assure you that it is actually happening. Now, given the sensitive nature of this topic and the fact that the previous video I so much as mentioned this organization that we're going to be talking about in got age restricted last time I decided not only to script this video for the sake of my channel but also to demonstrate whether or not this organization has such close ties with the tech industry where they can actually influence a company like YouTube or other social media platforms to suppress any mention or criticism of them so it's going to kind of serve as a dual purpose to inform you guys about this particular organization as well well as kind of test the waters to see what is and is not off limits. So in this particular instance, I normally don't ask for this up front, but if you guys could drop a like on this video to kind of help it out in the algorithm, because again, I don't know to which degree YouTube is going to try and suppress this. So a like would go a long way to make sure that people can actually see this video, which, you know, would be nice. But just to add to the overall kind of tinfoily hatness of this entire situation, immediately after mentioning them in my previous video, they completely protected and locked up their company's public facing Twitter account, which, you know, that's totally not suspicious whatsoever. I mean, right after my video talking about them gets age restricted manually by YouTube, they decide to private their social media presence. But long story short, this video unfortunately will not be unscripted. So that way I don't give them any sort of reason to potentially flag this video aside from shining a light on this particular organization. So with that said, you might be wondering who is this organization that has potentially this much pull and clout within the video game industry? Well, it has been brought to my attention recently that an organization named Sweet Baby Inc. has been working behind the scenes for over half a decade at this point with the one goal of injecting woke political ideologies into video games where they previously didn't exist or belong to further the message. Founded in 2018, Sweet Baby Inc. is a narrative development and consultation studio based in Montreal and working around the globe. Our mission is to tell better, more empathetic stories while diversifying and enriching the video games industry. We aim to make games more engaging, more fun, more meaningful, and more inclusive for everyone. Give you, yeah, the, the origin story, I'll, I'll, I'll give it from my own perspective, is that um, I, I started out in the industry in 2013, and being a being a black woman in in, in the industry, being a marginalized person in, in in these spaces has not always been has not always been easy. In fact, it's been downright abusive at times. And I'm sure that no one in this room is, is, is any has has is, is it surprised to hear that. But there is so much abuse, so much toxicity, so much much awfulness in the industry, and and, and that was how. I kind of came through it for the first several years of my career. So that's that kind of forms our thesis uh, for the company that like representation is is a form of innovation, and that uh, it, it is one of the greatest uh, sort of blue sky approaches to innovation that people aren't really thinking about right now. Um, can talk about it briefly, but yes, we have a very very diverse team, and we believe that diversity is um, one of the best vectors for innovation in the games industry that people too often ignore. Um, like I said before, we try to be additive in our approach. We don't show up to a project and say, hey. These are all the problems. You're going to mess up if you do all these things this way. What that ends up doing is oftentimes that we'll sand it down and make something inoffensive and oftentimes, honestly, kind of boring um, and and kind of like uh, too smooth. And so instead, we try to put it, we try to go about it from an additive perspective where uh, we want to bring joy to the player. If you're if you're a player from from marginalized background and you see some you see yourself represented accurately on screen and you see a part of yourself that you've never seen on a screen, you'll get tremendous joy from that. And that's something that, like, that's the same kind of goal that you can, might want from, like, a design, uh, you know, a game design system. 
which also brings joy to the player. It's the same sort of like output, but from a very different discipline. That's right. Essentially what we have here is an ESG organization that solely exists to make sure video games are more woke, for lack of a better term, by rewriting stories and interjecting political ideologies into beloved games and franchises all in the name of promoting the current thing. Hey, what's up, guys? Just so you know, respect trans kids, affirm trans rights, stand with Ukraine, Black Lives Matter, we stand with these causes, spread in your community love, peace, and happiness. Black Lives Matter, stand with Ukraine. Trans visibility is valid. Now, even the name of this organization just sounds very strange, dude, and a little unsettling. And when you look into the origin of the name from the founder of the company, it just, it almost sounds sinister in a sense and super condescending. What it made us do was decide to create a, a, a new company. And the company's name, Sweet Baby Inc., uh, is actually derived from the fact that we worked with a lot of different teams in, in previous times. And every time we worked with someone who we really vibed with or we really felt like, okay, this is really, really going well, we would go like, wow, they were such sweet babies. And when we started Sweet Baby, we said, we only want to work with sweet babies. But yeah, that's right. You fell into line. You're a sweet baby. I don't know, man. Something about that just creeps me out. But as we typically see from the most sinister actors in any industry, they often hide behind a harmless or infantile, in this case, mask to conceal their true intentions. But make no mistake, this organization has completely and fully infiltrated the industry and has its hands in over 70 different video game projects and has a clientele across the majority of the video game industry's major publishers and platform owners. Now, taking a look at their client list, you'll see some of the largest names in video games among them. For example, Xbox Game Studios, which now also, in addition to the first-party studios Microsoft owns, includes Bethesda and Activision Blizzard as well. You see Electronic Arts, Valve, Santa Monica Studios, 2K, which is the parent company of Rockstar Games, Ubisoft, Square Enix, Warner Brothers, Rocksteady, Compulsion Games, Avalanche Studio Group, Wizards of the Coast, People Can Fly, and Remedy. Those are some of the notable ones, but you can kind of see what's going on here. So not only has this organization infiltrated the largest players within the video game industry, but they've also influenced some of the largest game releases in the past few years, and these are the ones that they're allowed to publicly show off. So there could be even more, both already released and upcoming, that they have touched that, you know, we have no real idea what they're actual involvement with is because those companies for whatever reason may have chosen not to publicly announce their collaboration with sweet baby we've been working on for years finally coming out in in this year we have in fact in october we have three games uh launching um battle shapers spider-man 2 and alan wake 2 and those are games that we've been working on for for quite a long time. We worked on, on ages ago, and now it's finally happening. So even the weird thing is, even though we've been working for such a long time since 2018, there are very few like bigger titles that we've actually have our, our names on, and it's only starting now. At which point I think that we are realizing, okay, now we're going to be stepping out a little bit into the world. But a few of the notable ones are God of War Ragnarok, which they say we worked on narrative and character consultation with a focus on representation, which really puts the whole Angraboda situation into perspective. And it really explains why the God of War franchise has taken such a tonal nosedive compared to the previous entries in the series, because God of War, for example, used to be one of my favorite franchises of all time. But with this new reboot saga of Kratos being a much more emotional and I guess down to earth character, you can really tell that the series is no longer what it used to be and it makes sense, especially when you consider the fact that a outside party like Sweet Baby Inc. is making these horrible narrative decisions within the game for the sole purpose of diversity and inclusion. They don't care about the overall story. They're hired to do one thing and that is to push the agenda within these games. So our next example is Spider Mid 2, which they worked on the story consultation for, which, again, in the case of Spider-Mid 2, the story was one of the weakest points in the game, especially in my opinion, and the game was literally dripping with woke and political ideology at every opportunity, so hearing that Sweet Baby Inc. consulted on the story, it all lines up now, man. Why else would Insomniac consult with a narrative consulting company that exists solely for implementing woke ideology into the games, other than for that purpose? Like, it literally makes no sense otherwise. Also, the decision to have Miles replace Peter cannot simply be chalked 
chalked up to a narrative decision when it's now abundantly clear that the driving factor behind that choice was in the name of diversity representation and furthering the message that Sweet Baby aims to promote. Now, in addition to God of Snore Ragnarok and Spider Mid 2, Alan Walk 2 is another one where they worked on character arc, voice, and sensitivity reading. And again, in a similar scenario, Alan Walk 2 forced the player to play as a new character, Thaga Andathan, for the majority of the campaign rather than the name character that the game is literally named after. And her part of the story feels completely forced and unnecessary at times. Well, now we know exactly why that is the case. Remedy consulted Sweet Baby Inc. not only for character arc services, but also for sensitivity reading, which for those unfamiliar with the term means someone who reads for offensive content, misrepresentation, stereotypes, bias, lack of understanding, etc. They create a report for an author and or publisher outlining the problems that they find in a piece of work and offer solutions in how to fix them. So essentially, they are wokeifying the game and making sure it checks all the proper ideological boxes to be as representative and inclusive as possible to boost that ESG score. So in case you were wondering why Saga Anderson in the first game was white and now all of a sudden she's a black FBI agent and you play the majority of Alan Walk 2 as Saga Anderson instead of Alan Wake himself, now you know. It's because Sweet Baby Inc. was brought in and put their hands all over this game in particular. So in addition to these games, Sweet Baby Inc. worked on Gotham Knights, which we saw how that turned out, and they're also working on the upcoming Suicide Squad game, which is it any surprise that game looks like a complete and total train wreck? Now keep in mind, these are the games that are publicly advertised to have partnered with Sweet Baby Inc., but it's entirely possible that there are many more games both released and upcoming that they have a hand in, especially considering that client list, because, you know, I know one of Microsoft's games, South of Midnight, they're doing the narrative consultation and storytelling for, so that game's gonna be a complete and total train wreck, but who knows how many games across Microsoft they've worked on, considering how many studios and franchises Microsoft has under their umbrella. But what I think is the most significant thing about this entire revelation is that the overall trend of video games becoming more and more political and constantly shoving their political messaging in your face is not just some random occurrence or coincidence. This is a calculated and outsourced activity that allows a company like Sweet Baby Inc. to exist for the sole purpose of politicizing games and furthering the woke agenda within them. Like, that is the point we're at right now. This isn't some conspiracy at this point. This isn't some opinion or subjective take on this entire issue. This is an objectively provable fact that this company is being contracted by some of the largest companies in the industry for the sole purpose of making games more woke and taking the reins of narrative design and storytelling to fit this goal of forced inclusivity and diversity. Essentially, from the outside looking in, Sweet Baby Inc. appears to be the ESG enforcement wing of BlackRock or other ESG champions within the video game industry to help problematic publishers and developers step in line with the so-called socially acceptable ideologies that further promote this woke agenda to ensure that stock prices stay high and the cash injections keep coming from companies like BlackRock, which if you guys are not familiar with BlackRock and companies like it, BlackRock is the largest private equity management company on planet Earth, and they most likely are in charge of managing your retirement fund, pension fund, or investment portfolio in general. They are the main and driving proponent behind ESG compliance, which stands for environmental social governance, which is basically this woke ideology masked behind the veil of being a quote unquote good citizen of the world. But basically how much you adhere to ESG or woke ideology influences your company's ESG score, which is a proprietary system that BlackRock uses to evaluate companies and decide which companies get to receive investments or cash injections from the literal trillions of dollars they manage. Now keep in mind, because BlackRock has so much money at their disposal, them buying or selling shares in your company on the open market can dramatically influence the perceived value of your company and can result in either your stock price soaring or tanking. So companies are heavily incentivized to play ball and prioritize ESG compliance. So Vanguard, BlackRock, and many other companies like them are these massive enforcers of ESG compliance. And because of the amount of money they manage, it not only incentivizes this compliance, but in some cases, it makes it a requirement simply for companies to be able to exist. In this particular case, Sweet Baby Inc. appears to be a means by which game developers
developers can raise this score by outsourcing their narrative development to ensure that it plays ball with the current ideology that is quote unquote acceptable to these different companies. Now, Sweet Baby Inc. uses this posture within the industry to consult the studios and upon further investigation of their site, they detail all the services and quote unquote support offered to developers. So if we take a look at their approach page on their website, it says Sweet Baby Inc. is an inclusion focused narrative and consultation company. We are building a team and a process in hopes of building a kinder, more sustainable industry at every scale. Whether you need a fresh pair of eyes or a guiding hand, we're here to work with you. Our approach, we begin with an all hands review and discussion of your project material. Everyone at Sweet Baby sees your project and shares their thoughts, feelings, and ideas. We do this because it kicks the project off with a multitude of perspectives, beginning a conversation that ensures the work is richer and more resonant before it is even put to paper. We then create a complete narrative deliverable by keeping the player in mind with a focus on user experience and emotional design. We aim to consult with honesty, transparency, and a conversational approach to help find the best direction for your project. Now, services they offer. We bring in diverse voices to solve diverse problems. Sweet Baby Inc. provides narrative consultation at any stage of development, boasting a team of diverse talent with vetted industry experience to best bring your story to life, and the services they offer span writing, narrative, representation, and developmental services. Now, as far as writing goes, from cinematics to barks and everything in between, we tackle every type of writing for any type of game. We bring excitement, emotion, and character to the forefront, and we aren't afraid of breaking something down to build it back up. We do cinematics, dialogue, UI, UX, writing, barks, copywriting, etc. Now for narrative, whatever your story needs, we're here to help. We tackle narrative and character in any form, keeping emotional resonance and authenticity at the heart of our work. What we do, story pitches, world building, character creation, narrative design, story feedback, and tweaks, and more. Now this is that South of Midnight game I mentioned that is from Microsoft Game Studios, so it seems like they have their hands all over that one, so I'm sure it's going to be an absolute gem when it releases. Now for representation, I think it's interesting they use Alan Walk 2 as the uh, prime example here. We believe that representation is key to connecting players and audiences, and we offer a few ways to help your team and project gain the perspective needed to make it happen. We're part of an inclusive and knowledgeable community of diverse consultants able to cover a wide range of cultural and sensitivity topics. Our approach leads with the creation of joy in marginalized players and seeks to be additive rather than strictly corrective. We do cultural consultation, sensitivity and inclusivity reading, risk and opportunities assessments, and more. And for development services, we tackle development projects big and small. Whether you're making smaller, more focused games or bigger, full-fledged multimedia projects, we can assemble and lead an amazing team of new and marginalized voices who can bring it all to life. We do full-scale game development and interactive fiction. I mean, isn't that just absolutely wonderful, man? You know, they truly are having a wonderful impact on the video game industry as a whole. So if you guys were ever left wondering why so many games seem to follow similar narrative and design trends in the AAA video game landscape, it's because companies like Sweet Baby Inc. are literally being used to rewrite and reshape narratives in a way that sucks the soul and unique attributes out of them in favor of tokenism and forced diversity for the sake of appearing inclusive, and this is only the tip of the iceberg. Sweet Baby Inc. has been a thing for the past five years, and we're only now just hearing about them, and as they said in their own words, many of their projects haven't even been announced yet. We've been working on for years, finally coming out in in this year. We have, in fact, in October, we have three games uh, launching. Um, Battle Shapers, Spider-Man 2, and Alan Wake 2, and those are games that we've been working on for for quite a long time. We worked on, on ages ago, and now it's finally happening. So even the weird thing is, that even though we've been working for such a long time since 2018, there are very few like bigger titles that we've actually had our, our names on, and it's only starting now. At which point, I think that we are realizing, okay, 
now we're going to be stepping out a little bit into the world. I mean, just imagine how many other similar companies are out there doing this exact same thing that Sweet Baby Inc. is doing right now and worming their way into the industry, just making video games worse and worse at every turn, more and more generic, and just following these similar tropes over and over again. Because who knows how truly deep this rabbit hole goes, and only time will really tell. But what is important to understand is that there is an objectively provable, concerted effort to make the industry more and more woke by sacrificing creativity in the name of diversity, inclusion, and representation, all in an effort to please the powers that be. It is not even a question at this point if video games are woke or not when the majority of studios are contracting companies like Sweet Baby Inc. to literally make them woke. That is the sole purpose they're even being hired in the first place. This isn't some conspiracy at this point. This is an objectively true thing that's occurring. And I just want to say this too, in defense of Sweet Baby even, they might not even be aware to the true nature of what's going on. You know, they could be fooled in this entire thing too and think that they're actually being hired to do like genuine good in their own minds. But in reality, they're just another cog in this machine that we've seen throughout all aspects of life nowadays that are just dead set on pushing this cultural and political agenda down our throats at every opportunity. So I just want to say that too, in their defense, they might not even be aware to the true nature of what's going on and they think that they might actually be genuinely doing something good when in reality they're just being used by the black rocks of the world to further push the agenda that they so desperately want to force onto us in every aspect of our life, whether it be entertainment, our jobs, news, politics, you name it. You can't escape it and Sweet Baby Inc. could just be a convenient partner in all of this that has no real idea what it is they're actually partaking in. But all in all, I say that to say this, that this is definitely not just some conspiracy at this point and it honestly just adds to the disheartening nature of the modern gaming landscape where we already have gameplay being sacrificed for a more cinematic movie game approach in video games nowadays but even now on top of that it seems like the narratives of those games are being betrayed and outsourced to the sweet babies of the world and it'll be interesting to see what exactly happens with this particular video because I think I've done my best to stay within the confines of what's considered to be advertiser friendly and I've definitely stayed well within YouTube's TOS but after that last video got manually age restricted by YouTube I have to wonder if this company and companies like it are truly off limits when it comes to YouTube discourse so if you guys could like and share this video I would greatly appreciate it and hopefully it was insightful and helpful in understanding this particular issue surrounding Sweet Baby Inc and their role in the current landscape of the video game industry and I think it is kind of ironic because like I mentioned in my Alan Wake 2 review which we now know that Sweet Baby Inc had a massive role in helping to develop and write the narrative for I think our boy Alan Wake put it best it's not a loop it's a spiral a downward spiral